Welcome to All Shorts Pillow Talk with my dear missus. <laughs> anyway, we want to talk about the new nasty party. It's called the Labour Party, you know. Do you know it, Caroline? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a bit nasty, this is article. So. It is rather, I would say so. And um, Keir Starm has just made an announcement that all people should be expected to work. Everybody. It don't matter if you've got no legs. No. It don't matter if you... Well, I've got cerebral palsy. No, you must go to work. But, of course, you may need a little bit of support. Like a skateboard or something. I don't know. <laughs> skateboard? What's this a skateboard got? <laughs> I don't... Not at all. But, anyway, joking aside, it's actually... Quite worrying. Now, anybody who knows us will know that we have a disabled son. And now Keir Starmer is going to expect him to go to work. I don't know how that's possible. Nor do I. I really don't know how it's possible. I mean, if you knew Matthew, you'd know it's not possible. I mean, Matthew can't even sit in his wheelchair for more than half an hour without feeling very uncomfortable. He spends... Most of his day laying on his bed. Yeah. Well, he does. He has uncontrollable which call, muscle spasms. But that also causes more pain, more problems, because he... Yeah, like you know, most people, he can move about and stuff, but then he gets a lot of fatigue because he can't... He, well, he's, he gets constant spasms. He's got a condition called torsion to stone, and that's just our son. Now, it's all very well making statements, which is this statement by Keir Starmer is absolutely ridiculous... It's, it's the most idiotic thing I've actually heard for a long time. That there are thousands of conditions that will prevent you from working. How can you put it all into one box and expect everybody to look for work? Now, all I know, and you know this as well, don't you, Dan, is that it just causes excessive anxiety well, for know, our son. I know it causes stress for Matthew. I mean, yeah. Last time they wanted him to go to assessment unit and that took me... I had to really fight to say, no, I need someone to go to the house to assess them because it's not really comfortable for him to actually do it. No. And in the end, they said OK, and then about half an hour later, they emailed him to say that he didn't need to go anywhere and they would pass him. And to be fair, when bringing Matthew up, the actual help we got for Matthew was actually Matthew. brilliant. It was. Yes, yes. It was brilliant. And it is now, some of it is now. I yeah. think he's now had a lift but put not, in. Yeah, but forget, it's not the people who are working no, um, no. providing the services, is it? No. It's the, we're talking about the administration. In this case, we're talking about the government who now wants to reduce the uh, social care budget. or Not the budget, but the um, that amount of money they're spending. And so now... Just like the Tory party, you would do, use the same rhetoric again and again and again. Now, Labour's doing exactly the same thing. So is the Labour party the new nasty party? Well, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think there's a lot of people out there who could work and are not working. What, like your brother? <laughs> but um, there there's definitely is a lot of people out there who could be working and not working. But, but, but they, they know the people who are genuine. They know the people who have got long-term health conditions and they're not going to change. Well, anyone who's just been oh, either diagnosed with a problem or something or maybe a, a leg has fell off or something like that, well, they're going to know that those people are disabled because they've gone through the process well, at, through, well, through like, the hospital. Like Matthew. Matthew's always going to have generalised dystonia. He's never going to change. No. And, like, my friend's daughter's got cerebral palsy. She's always going to have cerebral palsy. The things like that are not going to change. Don't they, there are people there who could, could do some work. But the PIPs, uh, the uh, personal independence payments, doesn't allow for flexible working. You're either disabled or you're not. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you know? So ha, ha, you either go to work and lose all your benefits, and yet the worry is it could take... How long is it now to take to, to get to be assessed and, and get your PIPs payments? There's people that have been doing it for nearly two, over two years, and they still haven't got anywhere with it. We've got a cat. <laughs> They always see the dog, they never see the cat. No, I've got cat. This is Riley, today. by the way. This is Riley. Yeah, he, he, yeah he's okay now. Yeah, he, do, he does nip you if you're not careful, though. Don't you? Hmm? 
But anyway, <laughs> he was a rescue. Yeah. We rescued from some French people who are going to eat him. But anyway, that's another story. Really going to eat my coffee. <laughs> but, but, uh, don't tell Donald Trump, whatever you do, okay? <laughs> They're eating the cats. <laughs> They're eating the dogs. <laughs> They're eating your pets. <laughs> it was like, um, oh, Springfield. Oh, well, we're actually going <laughs> off target. We're well, just a bit, we've gone very much off target because the cats just jumped on us. Mm. What do you expect? Mm. So the, the thing is, you see, we get people like... Myself, I've been in the construction industry most of my life, working hard outside, having with tools, in, in all sorts of conditions. And I've got my health, I've got fibre in my hour jet, and although I don't claim any benefits because I can work, so I'm doing, I, do, I do what I do, but I can, because I'm flexible in the sense that, yeah, I'm self employed here in France, yeah. and I do a variety of different things, but if I feel I can't get. Um, well, if you had a really bad day, you could just take the day off yeah. and then do more the next day. Exactly. Or something. And what was I doing about an hour ago? Asleep. I was asleep on the sofa, you know, because I can't, I can't get through the day. Mm. And the same with like Matthew, for instance, he can't get through the day. And there's loads of people who have disabilities can't get through the day because the disability themselves makes them so tired. And if you're physically disabled, everything is harder. Yes. You know, I don't see how this is going to fail. Keir Starmer, if you're listening, I know you're not. But this stupid plan of yours is going to fail big time. You yeah, might get a few. The other, the other thing is, work, the other thing is that employ, the, the employer... Or the workplace. Do, do, I mean, not, you know, they, they might stuff. be lovely people, but do they really want to employ someone who's going to be off sick quite a bit, who might but, need support within the workplace or, you know? I think another thing, that needs, that needs to be flexible as well, because if you get, like, a, I don't know, like, I don't know... Uh, a Viva or a big company's got like a big work, a big company, they can suck up um, the costs of it all, can't they? Mm. You know what I mean? And the inconvenience, because it is an inconvenience. Sometimes when you hire somebody and they don't actually provide you with any benefit, that's called a hindrance. Did you know that? And end of the day, let's say for instance, I, I was a small employer, okay? I, I didn't have many people work for me. Um, at one point, we had 13 people work for us. The business wasn't big enough, and there wasn't enough profit margin margin to be able to to cushion the blow of sick, having somebody in the workplace. Sick pay. That, yeah, exactly. The sick pay, the days off, being able to plan around them mm. for when the days where they have off. In, um, I don't think I could have done it. And it's the same like for me in my small business. Although, yeah, generally I didn't get any women who were interested in working for me. I don't know if I'd be able to be... I know it wouldn't be to say this, and it's politically incorrect, but I couldn't afford to employ someone. That might think it's a risk they might get pregnant, for instance. Paternity leave and stuff mm. like that. But then men can have paternity. Paternity leave. So, really, are you safe employing anybody? That's a good point, actually. Because, <laughs> because the man can take the leave instead of the woman, so that you can't be sexist there because that can be a man no, or course. woman take the leave. That's a very good point. And that That's a very good point. Changed. So you could have a bloke work for you and you think, oh, I'm safe here, and then his wife had a baby and she won't go back <laughs> to work and he's going to take nine months off. I, I just know I couldn't afford... My, my business, I, we would have really struggled to be able to pay somebody's wages and they're not actually... Producing or doing anything for nine months because it's a small business. Mm. It was uh, yeah, and or sick pay and sick pay Long -term as well. Sick pay. It, it is difficult. Small, it's hard for some small businesses unless the profit margins are high. Mm. But when you're working in, in construction and there's a lot of costs involved with that in construction when you're employing people, you got to get a vehicle for them. You got to have this. You got to have that. You got to have tools, health and safety equipment. It goes on and on and on and on, and it, all your profit margin gets sucked up in, in the expenses. Mm. And it depends on what you're doing, obviously. But it's um, uh, it's just destined to fail. The idea that I could employ somebody disabled to lay bricks, for instance, or work on a roof. Health and safety. Uh, health and safety. Well, I'd never get insurance for them. No. Who's going to ins insure somebody who's, who's disabled in the workplace? Well, what kind of workplace are they talking about? Are they just talking about... Talking about all um, Stefan's partner have epileptic fits. You, why would, you wouldn't want to... There's uh, epilepsy, yeah. You wouldn't want to employ someone who's that. Not on the roof. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know there's different circumstances. I know that not all workplaces were like my workplace. I get that. And some of them are offices and... and some you, are flexible and they can work from home and do things and that, but... Yeah, there is... <sighs> But they, they, they want to get rid of that as well, though, don't they? 
do they? They want to get people back into the workplace. It's like, for instance, Amazon are saying that all, they want to get all the workers back into the workplace. There's no um, mm -hmm. homeworking. How is this going to work? And we've got an ageing population in, well, everywhere, haven't they? Because you know, we're keeping people, putting sticky blasters on people to keep them alive longer. So what do we do? We, oh, you get the the, the, uh, el the age is much higher now, mm -hmm. so we'll increase the pension age. We've also got to think of mental health as well, because it's not just physical health, there's mental health. This could, that's a good point, actually, yeah. Um, but also, Caroline, in the UK, if you haven't applied for PIPs payment before retirement age, you can't get it after retirement age because it's just considered as old age or disability. Same, Same here in France. But the point is, if you keep raising the retirement age, you'll have a situation where more people are going to be on PIPs payment anyway. Yeah, but if you claim it before pension age, you can, kill, you can keep it in pension age. Because we're, all we're doing is, is keeping people keeping people alive for longer, don't mean to say they're physically able to work. Mm. Does it? Now, if you look in the construction industry, for instance, it's common knowledge that, the, you know, people have their problems. I've got problems. I've carpal tunnel syndrome, and um, I always got phobia in my algae. Why I got that, I don't know. But anyway, I got it. I mean, 10 years ago, I'd have been retired by now. Yeah. Well, you all get. Yeah. <laughs> But now I've got to be 67. Yeah. So getting older and older and older mm. and older. And the same in France. It's, not, it's still better than UK regarding retirement age. But they've increased it recently. There's a lot of protests regarding that. But what choice do they have? Because they've got quite a high um, uh, debt in France. So it's, yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? And um, with waiting lists getting longer and longer and longer well, see that's another thing really there's a lot of people waiting to have operations and they could work when they've had the operations and they're recovered but mm -hmm. they can't work until they have an operation so maybe that's a lot of the problem is that well, long-term uh, sickness yeah so they have said this they will get people off long-term sickness I, I i get that because obviously waiting lists but it makes a lot of sense mm. and then maybe those people can get back to work and they may, maybe they want to get back to work well yeah they should start by encouraging people to get back out to work who can get back out to work but that isn't what he said and maybe investigate some of the people who they're not so sure about but the people who they know was what they shouldn't be they shouldn't need to in the, they but he, he to. said that everyone should be expected to look for what everyone, including the sound. Me? Everyone. You get, you get to work, woman. Don't I do it? What have you, 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 you got you're claiming your pension? <laughs> you expect to work then? Because there is people who, as like you were mentioning earlier, there's people who are claiming pensions who have to go back to work because they can't afford to live because yeah. Keir Starmer has decided that's a great idea to take away their winter fuel allowance and obviously, obviously I mean, the cost I've, of living I mean, I've got parents who've just lost a winter fuel allowance and they're not rich. No, by, by no means are they rich. No. Now, one of the thing that gets me is that this idea that he's going to assess everybody to try and get them back, to force them back into work... Because that's what it feels like, and that's what I feel like to a lot of people, like Matthew, mm. that he's been trying to force him to work even though he knows he can't. They, everyone's going to have to be assessed. How much is this going to cost? Because mm. either going to have to be home assessments, you're not going to get the half-ton man, are you, into an assessment centre unless you've got a low loader and a crane. You know? How, how much is this all going to cost? So I've got to do house well, some visits. Some of these are going to be house visits, aren't they? Because Matthew would have to have a home visit. yeah. You had to fight for that last time. Well, he didn't go in the end. They decided to just give it to him anyway. Yeah. They said, oh, well, we'll, well just go them, from the... Yeah, yeah. but Keir Starmer's made it quite clear he wants to push but, it. But I really... I mean, Matthew can't fight himself. Matthew can't speak. No. He's um, had voc um, spasms in his vocal cords, so he can't communicate by speech. So He can speak, but he can't understand him. No. So he... He can by email and things, but they don't seem yeah, to be able to do that. Yeah, but they don't do that. They've got no so contact system. That's usually me or his brother or sister who have to fight for him. A lot of this is actually against the 1996 um, Disability Dis um, Discrimination Act. Including that, the fact that you can't actually communicate... You've got a dog down there, no? Um, the fact you can't even communicate with mm. them is discriminating as well. Mm. 
Yeah, you know, there's a lot of places who Matthew, well, we have to phone for Matthew because they don't deal with e emails. No. The doctor surgery, the wheelchair repair. It's really, you know. Mm -hmm. He oh. can't. He'd like to do it himself, but he can't. Now, th let's be fair. There are a lot of jobs now. That's not as it used to be, is it? We've got a lot of digital jobs and stuff like that, where people are physically disabled. They could actually do some of these jobs. That oh, is, yeah, that is yeah, a distinct no, no, possibility. They could. If, They'd still get the mobility. If they would, if they would. If they would adjust the, the PIPs payments to allow them to work a little bit. Like, oh, they can work 10 hours a week. Well, then we'll give them a benefit for working that 10 hours a week, but we wouldn't take their benefit away completely. Yeah. It's like this uh, Matthew's friend who he works, he actually paints with his feet. Yeah, he did a brilliant picture of um, Yoda. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, he paints with his feet. That, you know, he, he sells his paintings. But there'll be times when he won't be able to sell anything. Mm. So it's not, you know, you need flex, need, with disability, you need flexible income. Mm. It's all very well, Caroline, uh, the government hammering down on uh, those who are clearly disabled and you can't work and they're forcing them to go through assessments, what have you, and all the mental stress of that. Yes. What about people who are cheating the system? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty of them. Hmm. Maybe we should grasp them up. Well, maybe. <laughs> Do you know anyone? <laughs> yeah. Would you grasp them up? Leave it in the comments down below. But <laughs> I'd actually feel quite uncomfortable about that, to be honest. Yeah. Because uh, there are some people out there who are disabled, but aren't obviously disabled. Like people who get out of their cars because they're just parked in the uh, disability space. And... Uh, yeah, they, they look absolutely fine, but we don't know what's wrong. Well, they might not be fine. We don't know. We don't, do you? No. You know, they might have conditions. A hidden disability. A hidden disability, yes. And some people are just ugly, you know, and that could be classed as a disability. Look at me. <laughs> and me. Oh, no, you're not ugly. She's pretty as a picture. Anyway, let's keep that one in the safe. So, anyway, so, um... <laughs> Actually, I think we should wrap this up, actually. I think so. I think wrap this up. What do you reckon? Do you think that, uh, this is the new nasty party? And do you think we should grass up the benefit cheats to free up some, um, some money so we don't have to uh, put the disabled people through a living hell? Good idea. I think it's a good idea. Hmm. Who should we start with? Don't know. Uh, a cheat. So we start with the Tory party. There's a whole load of them we can get through. There's isn't probably there? a lot of MPs. And there's loads of cheats there. <laughs> they're not to benefit cheats, but they're benefiting. What about Michelle Moan and, and the 200 million or whatever it was oh, to MedPro? That, you know, her with the fake boobs and the big boat. <laughs> you know, what about her? Oh, the, the, knicker, the knicker salesman. Her. Mm. We do, well, and what about the 30, uh, what was it, 37 billion uh, for a hard on Dido, whatever her name was, you know? What happened to that money? <laughs> I don't the know. track and trace, or trace and track, or whatever track it was called. And, trace. and the wasted money on the apps that didn't work because uh, they used the wrong database system, they used Excel. The PPA. An old one. Yeah, and the, P all the PPE, and all their personal protection equipment, that's yeah. Michelle Moan and what have you. Mm. What about Michael Gove? Mm. You know, uh, who, who signed it all off, and yeah, yeah. And what about Michael Gove and his football tickets? I'm more worried about the, um, the little red dress. Well, and if we sorted all that out, we might not need to attack the disabled people. Well, exactly, that's my point. <laughs> that's my point. There's so much waste. What about actually? Let's tax the rich. <laughs> that's a great idea. Yeah. I thought that's what the Labour Party was going to be I doing. That's what they were doing. Too. I thought that. Well, what happened there? No, I'll tell you what. We'll take away your winter fuel lands. Anyway. On that note, it is a good night from her. And good night from me. Good night. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. <laughs> is that our pillow talk? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and if you want to watch Janine do on Patreon or, or buy us a, 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 a coffee, then maybe, maybe we too won't be disabled because we had a full plastic surgery and Botox that moves around the face. Or, Something like that. Or plant a tree. Or plant a tree. Yeah, there's a Wilden project as well. Links down below in the description. Toodaloo! <laughs>